What's up, scholars? We are back. And I know I say the same thing over and over again, but in earth science, it is so important for us to remember these words. Yes, you have to remember these words. So I'm going to ask you, what word in earth science means the breaking down of rocks? Do you remember? Do you remember? What word in earth science means the breaking down of rocks? It breaks them into small little sediments that can be moved or transported and that's of another word do you remember 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 i hope you remember that the word was weathering yes weathering is the breaking of and after that we gave you another vocabulary word a word that meant those sediments were transported they were moved and the word was look like this it moved from this point to that point erosion yes the word was erosion and we remembered that during the process of erosion that these sediments and sometimes rocks they're bumping against each other and some of them will be rough and some of them because of those processes will be more smooth but erosion is when sediments are transported from one place to another but remember they don't move forever eventually they have to stop remember we had the sediments and the sediments were up and we noticed that those sediments were dropping down I can see the sediments moving around off in there. Give it a good shake. And then we notice that eventually they start to settle. They just start to deposit at the bottom in layers. And that process is called deposit deposition. Yes, deposition. So deposition was when these sediments were beginning to deposit in layers. And remember, we said that not all sediments are the same color. So these layers would begin to stack on each top of each other and stack on top of each other and stack on top of each other. And eventually when we drive by, we're able to see these large pieces of soil and they have these layers of all of these different colors because of this process called deposition. And those are the three that we've already talked about so far, but we have talked about how those process help tell the story about how some of the Earth's landforms are made, right? Some of the Earth's landforms were made because those process helped it out, right? Remember, one of the landforms that was made was a sand dune. And a sand dune was created with wind erosion. Remember that? When we were blowing, the sand was picked up and then it was deposited into these huge hills of sand. Huge hills of sand. I told you, you can go to Monahans, Texas, and you can actually slide down these sands like you're sliding down a mountain or skiing or something. It's really, really cool, except for the sand gets hot on your feet. It's really hot. It's really hot on your feet. So don't go out there barefoot. It will not be a good experience for you. But it's these giant things of sand. They're called sand dunes, giant hills. And you can slide down the hills because of the wind eroding the sand and then depositing it in these huge piles of sand. And we get this awesome landform called a sand dune. Well, not only was there weathering, erosion, and deposition for sand dunes, but we also talked about a couple of other landforms that I'm going to continue to remind us of. We had our desert arc. And remember, we used our Play-Doh for that one. And we were showing how the sediments were carved out to make this desert arc. So we had weathering and erosion, like pounding on this rock. And they carved out this beautiful landform called a desert arc. I would love to just go stand in the middle of it like this and take a picture. I think that would be an epic picture. What do the children say? It would be Gucci. I have another landform called a hoodoo, and we talked about the hoodoo. Who do you? Who do me? Who do? Who knew about the hoodoo? Yes, we talked about a hoodoo, and hoodoo is also formed via the same processes whenever wind weathers and erodes, weathers these sediments that pound against these rocks, and they create these awesome shapes that we can go out and see and we give them really cool names because they have their own story so they deserve their own name they deserve their own label yes well today it's not over because there's another landform that we've talked about we're actually going to model today remember a model is a representation we can't go out here and directly create the landform that we're going to create today mr washington does not have millions of years to be sitting around here doing that but what we can do is we can model its creation now the landform that we are going to create today is called a canyon if anybody has ever been out to the grand canyon it's one of the most amazing sites that you could ever see cannot wait for my moment 
I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. But the Grand Canyon at the bottom, it has moving water flowing through it. We call that a river. And today we are going to model the creation of a canyon using a river. Now, we know that this takes a very long period of time, but we don't have that much time. So Mr. Washington is actually going to model it with a cup. This cup has a hole in the bottom right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that with my thumb. I'm going to fill this with water and then I'm going to release it right over the top right here. And we're going to observe what happens to that water and that soil as it's pouring through that cup. Now just think, this is the representation of the river. This is a representation of flat land. And what we're doing is I have it slanted just a little bit to speed up the effect because I don't have millions of years to make this happen. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. 70 plus 10, maybe. All right, here we go. So we're gonna take my water, which is representing my river. This is my soil representing my flat land. And here we go. Put that up in there. Let's get it really good. Right, 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 right. Are we ready? What do you think's gonna happen? Ooh, he asked us that question. You thought I was about to do it, didn't you? Yes, I was about to do it, but then I thought, I wanna know what you think is about to happen before I show you. I want you to think about it. If you wanna pause and jot, feel free to do that. Pause and jot what you think is going to happen. What do you think it's going to look like? What do you think are going to be the effects? And here we go. All right. Weathering and erosion. Actually, it's going to be the erosion of sediments, not weathering. We're about to erode these sediments. Erosion in 10. Erosion in 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Oh, 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 oh my goodness, this looks like the Grand Canyon. Okay, now I want you to picture this. I want you to picture this. This is a canyon. Do you see that giant, those giant spaces, right? These parts up here are, are the brim where you can walk around and then there's these huge dips where you go down. That's what this models. All of this would be the high places and all of this sand would have been eroded and carried and eroded and carried and it's deposited off in another place. If I slide this back, you can actually see how it was deposited in the bottom of this container. You see that? Yes, that sand, that soil was eroded. That is too cool. And that's how canyons are made. I know I can't believe it either, but it's true. The water erodes the sediments. The sediments continue to take away piece by piece and layer by layer, and it gets deeper and 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 deeper until you get these gigantic things we call canes. And it's amazing. And all of that comes from the story that canyons tell us about how the earth was formed. Yes, it's so cool. Land. Forms. Remember, landforms are the different ways that land forms, and land forms in these different ways because of these different processes that the earth has in place. And three of those processes are weathering, erosion, and deposition. And remember, there are three agents of erosion. What are three agents of erosion? Wind, water, and I've got ice around here somewhere. I know that I do. And ice, yes. Wind, water, I found it. And ice. I'm not going to stick that in my mouth, I promise you. So, family, today is an amazing day. You just learned a lot about earth science, and you should be able to tell a story about the earth. You should be skilled at telling a story about the earth. You might be able to tell the story of a canyon. You might be able to tell the story of a sand dune. You might be able to tell the story of a hoodoo, 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 who knew? Who do? You might be able to tell the story of a desert arc, but you should be able to tell the story about something involving the earth. And when we tell our stories, we have to use our academic words. Weathering, erosion. Weathering is the breaking of. Erosion is the taking of. Deposition like a cake is layer making them. And we start going because we're moving towards the creation of a specific kind of rock that we call sedimentary rock. And we'll be talking about that on another video. Family, y'all are amazing. We will be back on soon with more amazing science.